Am I live? Yeah. All righty, folks. Howdy, howdy. We're at uh, here another Sunday. I know everybody around the world has been doing Sunday things, uh, and we do our own Sunday thing here. Uh, so we got a lot to talk about on the board here today. Uh, I'm not going to finish. I wanted to finish Romans 9 through 11 today, talk about the uh, the olive tree there. I'm going to get that in the next week or so. I don't know if this lesson may be a part two. I've had a, a lot of discussions on Facebook this week, and uh, which led up to this one here, which was yesterday. But first, <clears throat> I want to, um, this right here, when I, when I do my Bible studies, this right here is what I uh, use. I have a Webster's 1828 dictionary there, and let me break it down here. I use a uh, there's three different Bibles here. Here's a Strong's Concordance, okay? Here is a, a Word Complete Study New Testament by that Greek dude right there. He's uh, passed, but uh, uh, that's a nice little study guide for you. And then I use two different Bibles, and they have different references in it. One's a larger print, and that's so I can see. And then I use the other Bibles. And I also use the app on my phone. So there's a lot going on to get this here, and you, you just can't read your Bible, and that's uh, to get it's like our word there. Well, when you say there, if you don't put it in a proper context, people misspell it, number one. And then it's over there. Well, over there, T-H-E-R-E -E is not T-H-E-I-R. But people do write that way. Anyway, also, I, uh, I wrote this article right here, uh, be a year ago in March, <clears throat> and I had to revamp it. And this is what the study is. Uh, if I, it's probably going to be about. It's going to be mid month uh, next month. <clears throat> Excuse my coughing. Uh, I've had cannot get rid of that thing. Uh, but uh, I know last week was bad. And I apologize. But uh, in this right here, uh, the uh, uh, who can be a disciple in Scripture. It's three pages long, and you can go back in March of uh, my Facebook. You can find that back there. So. Uh, what's going to happen is in uh, next month, I'm going to start a study on Paul's conversion. Who are the disciples in your body? What does that mean to be a disciple? And it's going to be eye opening, folks. And when it becomes eye opening, you have to make some decisions if you're listening to this channel, whether you want to believe that or not. But be that as it may, uh, that's where we are right there. And I have this eight ounce bottle right here. <coughs> uh, uh, one of our, uh, we had a new customer, she ordered, I don't know if she ordered fire cider or elderberry syrup from us. Uh, well, I asked all ago and we just, I didn't get a clear answer on that. Anyway, this is an eight ounce bottle and she bought this. So she messaged us uh, into her website uh, this past week and said, it, it tastes bad, but when's it get, when's it start to work? We feel better, but when's it start doing the things that you say it does? Eight ounces, folks. It's not going to change a lifetime of you putting money in, in bad health. There has to be other changes for this to take effect also. This is not a cure-all. But this eight ounce bottle right here represents most people's Bible study. They'll pick up their Bible today, maybe because they go to church. They'll carry that on their side, the biggest Bible they got in their finest suit. They'll walk into a church today and they have an eight ounce of Bible, okay? We don't do eight ounces of anything around here. Let me get another jug. What we do around here, folks, is this is what I do anyway. I start at gallon sizes of anything, and I go up to five gallons. I go up to 65 gallons on some things we got out in our shop right now, folks. That's my size of Bible study is 65 gallons. If you want to know what the Lord's got to say to you, you got you to put in more than eight ounces of Bible study a week. But that's up to you. <clears throat> what? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta give my wife her Bible because I commandeer her Bible. And she does have a paper Bible here today. So when I say that, it will be my wife. <clears throat> anyway, folks, what we got going on is a definition of words that are used in your Bible. <clears throat> Just because when we read a word in your Bible, that does not mean that that word right there means what you think it does especially in today's uh, vernacular, because we were looking for uh, <clears throat> a, a couple months ago, we were looking for an, uh, someone named a product that we have, and it's a Greek word. 
I asked Google about it. Google had no clue what that word was. It didn't even know it was a word. Well, because Greek today is not the same Greek, ancient Greek that's taught 2,000 years ago. I had to research and research and research it. Find that word online to find it that it's an ancient Greek word that's not used today. Okay? So <clears throat> when you study your Bible, this is where Webster's got his definitions from, was the Bible. And when we say a word today, it may not mean what it did 200 years ago to 500 years ago. Most likely it doesn't. <clears throat> because there's some gay people today, folks, that think they're gay, and they're not happy at all. But they call themselves gay. They commandeer words to change words. And that's all languages of today, folks. It's not. They filter it down. They're dumbing down society by diluting, diluting. <clears throat> when I was, uh, I was telling my wife, uh, 1983, I was at, uh, we call it OP13, Germany, looking across the border, uh, the cold wall down there, uh, Iron Curtain. And I had a fascination. Why are those Russians on the other side in Eastern wanting to kill me? I didn't understand that. I'm 19 years old, okay? They stuck me up on top of this mountain. I, they asked me in the very beginning, where do you want to go? I want to go to Alaska or Hawaii. There are tanks in Alaska, you know, and Hawaii. There are. I want to be a tanker and at least where it's warm. No, they didn't ask me where I want. They asked me, but they didn't mean that. As soon as I graduated basic training, Aiden, Germany. Germany. So I get over there and I get this fascination with the Russian language. The Russian language is one that uh, uses, there's a lot of Russian poets, okay? And if you can read that and you can understand that language, there, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's more in depth of a language just like the French language, okay? Ours is kind of a generic, you got the Latin, we use this, we use that, like a Heinz 57 uh, language. And it's not as in-depth as the Greek, ancient Greek. I don't, don't just go out there and say, Rick is telling you to go to the Greek. I don't go to the Greek. I do find out because I'm gonna use everything available at my fingertips to understand what's in this word right here, folks. And if that includes me going to find it out in the concordance, what a word is meant in that context, I'm going to do that. And we're going to look at words today that are the same word. And if you apply the same meaning to that word, <clears throat> you get the confusion that we have today. So what we're going to look at, first of all, folks, I want to sit there and say this past study, <clears throat> It all started on uh, my YouTube on people saying this button now up here, pulling that back into the button now of, of Acts. And you cannot do that. So <clears throat> people will try to tell you I have a cliche right here. The word cliche. I don't like cliches, especially in the business that I'm up here doing teaching, because a cliche is one that says, okay, the book of Romans is written to the body of Christ, but Romans 9 through 11 is about Israel. That is a cliche. Where did that start at? Well, they couldn't understand Romans 9 through 11, so they had to make up a saying. That's what that is, a saying. <coughs> now, and uh, another cliche would be Acts is a transitional book. Folks, I'm here to say it's not a transitional book. It's a continuation, and we're going to look into that. But first, I had Romans 16, 22 up here last week. I had mentioned about that. You have Tur Tertius. He's only mentioned in your Bible one time. Yet, I read this week, because I did make mention of it last week, that uh, and Romans 16, 22 says it. That I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, though Paul dictated it to him, he's the one that actually wrote it. It says it in your Bible. It's not hard to understand. You believe it. But I read this week where Tertius is, to get around that, their doctrine, Tertius is Paul's Roman name. Well, I have problems with that, folks. My Bible only mentions his name one time. And just because you don't like what it says, you have to invent that that's Paul's Romans name. I'm going to go use some scripture. I have scripture to back mine up. You don't have it for yours. Let's go to Acts 13, verse 9. 
It says, then Saul, which was his Hebrew name, who also is called Paul. It does not say is also called Tertius. So you cannot do that. You can't put that in there because it doesn't say that. And that same gentleman is going to be going to a Bible conference online, as far as I know, in southern Missouri next month. Along with a fella out of West Virginia. You can take that to the bank or you can figure out who that is. Anyway, let's turn to Luke 24. We were there about a month ago. <clears throat> And verse 44, and these are Christ's words, folks. And he is talking about uh, his apostles, which he uh, appointed and, <clears throat> and commanded them to do certain things in Matthew 10. <clears throat> and verse 44 says, and he said unto them, Christ, because the words are in rednecks. These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. It said, what's it say, folks? <clears throat> that all things must be fulfilled. Those are the words of Christ. You can't believe those. Who can you believe? Next verse. Then open he there, understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and arise from the dead the third day. Now, <clears throat> I don't know, but that sounds similar to 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, which was according to the scriptures. <clears throat> Next verse. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. I can guarantee you that in 1 Corinthians 15, 6, Paul mentions these witnesses and who they are. About 500 of them, James and the boys, Peter and the boys. <clears throat> and then he finally gets down to him, born out of due time. <clears throat> now, must be fulfilled in the prophets of Sonus and the law of Moses. Let's go to Acts 26, 22. Where do you find those at? You find those in Israel scriptures of the Old Testament. Acts 22, or Acts 26. If this is a transitional book, the book of Acts, then don't you think Paul would say something different right here? But I forgot we can't use the words out of Paul in the book of Acts because he did not write that book. So those words are null and void. That's what they tell you. Acts 26. Acts 26, verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. Folks, Acts 26, Paul <coughs> is just about in Rome. He's in front of King Agrippa, but he's almost in Rome in his first imprisonment. He's gone from Acts 21 to get to Acts 26, going through the magistrates and everything to get to Caesar. So he can be judged by Caesar because he is a Roman citizen. And look what Paul does at the end almost of Acts. Look what he says. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue until this day, he says. Romans, I need to correct something here in a minute on Romans. <clears throat> Romans written in Acts 20, 2 Corinthians. Before I continue in this verse, I was hoping someone would catch in on the last video. I had started out by saying, I haven't listened to my videos lately, but I did listen to the last one. And I said that Rome was written in Paul's imprisonment. He was not in prison in Rome at that time. He was in Corinth where he wrote, he was there about three months in uh, Acts 18, or, I mean, sorry, Acts 20. Uh, it says three months there in Corinth. And he wrote probably Romans to 2 Corinthians right there. So uh, I do correct that statement. I was hoping somebody catch me and call me out on it because I want people to call me out if I miss speak about something anyway that's all that's on me let's finish this verse i continue to this thing witnessing both to the small and the great saying none other than those which the prophets and moses did say shall come now let's go back to luke moses 
and the prophets of what should shall come. Should come. Paul, in the book of Acts, folks, is not transitioning out of nothing. It's a continuation of exactly what Christ said must be fulfilled in Luke. Let's look at it again. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer rise from the dead. Verse 44, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. <clears throat> that book of Acts right there, folks, was everything that Christ talked about right there. There's no transition. Paul didn't transition into anything. Paul was doing exactly what Christ said, the same scriptures, okay? Just because in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 51, Paul says, behold, I show you a mystery. Does that make a mystery? Because if you look in Revelation, it also talks about that same mystery. Revelation 12, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> it could be 10, it's 10 to 12 in that area. It's been a couple weeks since I looked at it. Let's go, let's start now with the definition of words that's in your body, Bible. <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> we'll start with Romans 8. And I went on this about uh, four or five, six weeks ago. Uh, it was the, the part of, uh, when we got down to Romans 9, 4, uh, to whom pertain of these six things, we didn't go into the service of God. We're going to get into the service of God in a little bit because we're not going to be completely done with Romans 9, 10, and 11. We're not. We're just going to be working around that. I am eventually going to get up to the Ephesians and Colossians. Probably do a little bit of that probably next week about some other words. I'll be up in Ephesians and Colossians where Harry says, where do I fit in? But Harry doesn't fit in. <clears throat> I don't care what kind of Gentile Harry is. I don't care what breed he is. I don't care how if he's a hybrid. I don't care if he's a Heinz 57 Gentile. He would not fit in back here. But by God, I'll tell you this. He could have been a Scythian. He could have been a barbarian. And he fits in up here where Christ talks about him. I mean, Paul speaks about him. That he does. Because we're going to get into that. These people back here were predestinated. These people back here were chosen. And we're going to look at that in Saul's conversion. Exactly. According to scripture, what happened at Saul's conversion, not at the myths and the fairy tales that people want to try to feed you today. We're going to let scripture speak for itself. Don't let me speak because I'll misspeak. I can't be persuaded in my own mind, I said, like I said before, because I was persuaded in my own mind about other things. And I was persuaded. I've got to say <clears throat> that during this course right here, uh, luckily, I, uh, uh, while it's on my mind, uh, Jerry Porcy. Uh, about a year and a half ago, whenever the um, uh, Rodney uh, stuff blew up in the Northeast, if anybody knows what that is, if you don't, that's fine too. <clears throat> uh, I had wrote an article and then uh, he, Jerry Porcy, said, uh, replied something. And then uh, uh, it, it just eventually he tried to help me out and I could not hear. I did not have the ears to hear. <clears throat> and so I had to get rid of it because I, I got tired of hearing you said, and I mentioned that last week. <clears throat> but <clears throat> so back in January, I had my memories come up on Facebook and uh, one of them was pertaining to him. So I had to reach out to Jerry and I apologize for the article that I wrote. Uh, I was wrong. And he said, oh, it's no problem, Rick. Uh, glad to see that I'm advancing in the word of the Lord. And that was uh, his biggest thrill that I grew out of where I was. And another gentleman was, it just happened this past week. Uh, I don't know how it happened. Uh, somehow or another, but uh, I had uh, probably another Facebook memory, uh, another gentleman named Trent, and <clears throat> he tried to help me out probably in the same time frame, and I would not listen. <clears throat> so I just unfriended him. I didn't block him. And I reached out to him past week, and I apologized. He says, well, I don't remember it, and do I need, do I need to either. But I got to tell you, folks, there are some people out here that are gracious and they understand where some other people are at. They understand they're, that they're not where you are. And I understand some people may not be where I am in this teaching. That's why we have to study to show ourselves approved. But don't be discounting and call me a heretic because you don't understand that. 
I made that mistake and I had to apologize. And unfortunately, this past week, Jerry Porcy uh, passed away. He'd been in the hospital for a week and a half. Okay. I am glad that we reconciled last month. I am glad that I was shown grace last month by the man that I wrote an article about that was wrong. It's still on Facebook, folks. I don't take that stuff off. I don't delete my bad history. I want you to know where I was and where I am today. And from today, I want you to know where I will be a year from now. Because I want to tell you what, folks, this is a big book. Even though it is nothing the size of that Webster's 1828, this contains things that that down there does not. Okay? So we're going to turn to Romans 8. I've got to read this. Uh and I've got it down here, proof texting. I was accused of that yesterday, and I'm going to read what proof texting is because I had no clue what it was. I'd be accused of it, and the guy said, it just doesn't work for me. I said, well, I better find out what doesn't work for him, okay? Proof texting is the method by which a person appeals to a biblical text to prove or justify a theological position without the regard for the context of the passage they are citing. I said, I find that amazing because that's exactly what he's accusing me of that he's doing. And I had to go through all from here on up. And we're going to look at that tonight. Because I have to start out with the verse. We're going to start in 2 Timothy 2.10 of what started this conversation. I know I said Romans, but we're going to 2 Timothy 2.10. <coughs> Paul here, and most likely in the last book that he wrote. Um, and I had started uh, Timothy uh, last year. And I am glad that I only did one on Timothy because what is coming out now with Timothy uh, could be a shocker for some people. Anyway, 2 Timothy 2.10. Paul writes, therefore, folks, I'm going to say one word right here. The third word in this verse. I want you to remember that word here tonight. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Who are these elects? That's what we've been going on for the last months. <clears throat> that they may also obtain the salvation, <clears throat> which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I said, because I posted about the five adoptions, you only find that in the New Testament five times. It's all pertaining to Israel and not to you. Somehow the thread got into the elect, but that's okay. <clears throat> uh, the elect is... Israel. You cannot change that. It doesn't matter where in your Bible you find that. The elect is Israel. And of course, it didn't work out for him because I'm proof texting. So I had to go back in and give him. And we're going to look at every one of these verses about the elect and what God says the elect. And then <clears throat> if that's the case, Paul says here, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they Who's the they? The elect. Well, we got to find out who those people are. The elect's sake that they may receive this salvation also. Well, if we go to Romans and the elect in 8.33, let's go and read that. Romans 8. <clears throat> when you go by this cliche that Romans is written to the body of Christ, but Romans 9 through 11 is about Israel, and he was writing to the body of Christ about Israel. That makes no sense to me, because there's no uh, chapter breaks or verse breaks when Paul wrote this letter. Man put that in there to make it easier to understand and read. <clears throat> We're going to start Romans 8.33. <clears throat> if Paul is hoping, praying that the elect can be saved, and Romans 8 is to the body of Christ, and they're already saved. Let's look at this verse. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Folks, <clears throat> they say that this is written to the body of Christ. If they're by, in the body of Christ, they have to be saved. But Paul says, I'm, I endure for the elect's sake that they may receive salvation. You can't, you're speaking out both sides of your mouth. One elect doesn't have salvation. This elect does. Let's find out who this elect is. <clears throat> First, we're going to go up one verse to row 832. 
He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Now, all here does not mean all. Just because you see the words all, he says, now, if he'd left out the word right before that, we could have implied all. But he says, us all. <clears throat> he that spared not his own son, but delivered up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Well, who is this us that is involved in that all? Let's go back. Paul tells you that we can't use Paul's words in Acts because he didn't write it. Acts 13, 23. Paul is going to tell you exactly who this us is. <clears throat> you may not like it. That's not my problem. Acts 13, 32. <clears throat> nope. 23. <clears throat> of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Folks, there in this, what they call a transition, which is just a continuation. Paul, when he says us all is in the Acts ministry, is to Israel. These books are written to Israel. Church of God, do I wasted the church of God. First Corinthians, he opens that letter with the to the church of God. Now, somehow or another, the church of God that Paul wasted is not that church of God. They say somehow, I don't know how you can do that. Anytime you see the church of God, and we're going to be looking into that church of God, probably next week with part two of this, the church of God. Words, they mean things. They may not mean anything to you, but words to be able to communicate something has to have a meaning. Let's go to Isaiah. We're going to find out who this elect is, folks. Isaiah 42.1. Now, Paul loves to use Isaiah, and he's the only apostle that used him more than anybody else. <clears throat> I find that amazing. Uh, just like he said in Acts 26, 22, the law of Moses and the prophets. Isaiah 42, verse 1. <clears throat> Behold my servant whom I uphold. Since Exodus 19, 5, you can find out in the beginning of Exodus why he upholds these people. <clears throat> whom I behold mine elect. In whom my soul delight, if I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. But hold on. Who's he talking about here? Is the Christ of the elect? He is. That's who he put his spirit on. Now, let's hold on. Let's find some more of this elect. 45, 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake. And Israel, mine, elect. You got to remember, folks, in Romans 9, not all Israel is Israel. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee that thou hast known, not me. You look in John 16, I think, verse 3. Those Pharisees and Paul and everybody, he, Christ says, they know not the Father nor me. <clears throat> Isaiah 65, verse 9. <clears throat> Isaiah writes, and I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob. And he did. And out of Judah. And a heritor of thy mind mountains, and my elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell there. Verse 22. They shall not build, and another have it. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. <coughs> Look, folks, my, anytime you see my people, the people, thy people, that is Israel. 
Days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. Their hands implies more than one. So it's not talking about Christ being elected at verse because their hands. Now let's go up to Christ himself in his earthly ministry. I know we can't go there because that's Israel's mail, but we have Bible study here, folks, and we study the Bible. Matthew 24. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew 24. These are the words of Christ himself. <clears throat> Matthew 24, 22. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And you can figure out that uh, tribulation time. <clears throat> Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall so great signs and wonders inasmuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, if that cannot be Christ, because Christ is not yet, the coming of Christ has not happened yet. So it's the elect that's going through the tribulation. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet. A trumpet. A great sound of a trumpet in 1 Thessalonians 4 that everybody wants to think is theirs. Trumpet. Mm -hmm. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and one end of the heaven to the other. Now let's continue on some more Christ's words. That was Matthew. Let's see what Mark says about the situation. Mark 13, Matthew, Mark, <clears throat> Mark 13, we have four accounts of four different men talking about the same subject in these four Gospels. They're all looking from their perspective. <clears throat> Mark 13, 20, and except that the Lord hath shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved, but for the elect's sake whom he hath chosen, the elect's sake that he has chosen chosen, predestinated. We're going to stop right there for a second, folks. I said in the last video, is Paul part of the elect? Let's go see in Acts 9 real quick. <clears throat> now, folks, you can get off your mid-Acts dispensational high horse <clears throat> because Christ only told Paul one thing to do once he knocked him off that horse. He said, go into the street named Straight, and you find this boy, this fella named Ananias, and he will tell you what to do. Paul said, what must I do? And he told him, you go over there. He will tell you what to do. Acts 9. <clears throat> Uh, verse 15, uh, Christ is talking to uh, Ananias here to tell him to tell Paul what he's going to do. Verse 15. Well, we're going to start in verse 14 to pick up the context of thy name. And here he hath authority, Paul, Ananias saying this to God, our Christ, for the chief priest to bind all that call in thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he, Saul, is a chosen vessel unto me. Now, folks, let's go back here to Mark 13, 20. You can argue, you can squirm like a worm on hot coals all you want to, but your scripture says what it says. Mark 13, 20. Remember, chosen, the elect. And except, that the, and except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved, but for the elect's sake whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. <clears throat> You're not the elect, you are not chosen, and you are not called. 
though you may think you are, people sit around for years waiting. I'm waiting on the Lord to tell me what to do. When he sits there and says, I've already finished scripture. And uh, Paul said in First uh, Colossians 1, he has fulfilled the word of God. He doesn't speak to you. He wants you to get in here and find out what he already said. That's why he talks to you. And once you find that and you start believing what he says, then he enlightened the eyes of your understanding as to what he did to say. My uh, tape must have fell off my doohickey. We spend a lot of money on these pointers around here, folks. We are very high tech. Uh, verse 22 of Mark 13. For false prophets, I mean, for false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect that's going to go through that tribulation time verse 27 and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the othermost part of the heaven let's go to luke 18 7 matthew mark luke luke the writer of luke and also the book of acts <clears throat> that's why we can say it's a continuation because christ said until these things are fulfilled of what's written about me and Paul we're going to get into a little bit of Paul right over here what Paul thought about the situation we've gone through that but you gotta repeat 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 I'm good with that and meanwhile back at the hotel I gotta wet my whistle Luke 18 7 and in Luke when Christ said in uh Luke 24 when I told you those things, he says the same thing. That's where he was saying it in Luke 18, if you don't go back and look for it. Luke 18, 7. <clears throat> and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with him? The elect. <clears throat> now we're going to step into, and then Myers, his response was, well, I said, he wanted to ask me another question. I said, well, we can't continue on uh, until we resolve this issue. <clears throat> and his comment was, well, he had nothing to resolve. But I say, because he asked me a question, right? That's how you think. Well, no, it's not how I, 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 I the scripture says who the elect is. <clears throat> Romans 8, if we go to all, if we compare scripture with scripture, who the elect are, and somehow or another, you want to go to Romans 8 because you hold that dear to your heart that you have a cliche over here. <clears throat> You're holding the form of sound words according to your denomination. Somebody's lying. Now, if everything points to Israel as the elect, then the elect has to be in Romans 8.33, Israel. It, you cannot deny it. You can't find a verse where it changes it. It's not there. So we're going to start to the next uh, word. We've been on that remnant. We've been on the elect here. Romans 9, 27. <clears throat> now, folks, a remnant, uh, I can look at the, I can wash, I can have an oily substance in this bottle. And if I wash it out with cold water, when it dries, I could have a residue or a remnant of the oil that was in it. So I need not use hot water to clean it out. <clears throat> your remnant in your Bible, if you do not use one of these, you're going to think, assume that it means the same thing. Like our word there. Well, you got to use it in the context you use it. And for some people, you have to speak it out like your. You want to rub my rhubarb wrong to stop my conversation when you need to be writing Y O U R apostrophe R E and you just write Y O U R. Conversation ceases for me. I'm not the best in English, but there are some things that I stop on <clears throat> because we're getting lazy in language. I'm trying to build my language up. I don't want to go back to where I was. <clears throat> Romans 9 27. Oh, we was there. I don't know how long ago. We're there again today. 9 27 says, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, 
Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Now, we're going to jump over real quick to 11.5, uh, and then we'll go back to 9, again, excuse me, 11.5, even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Now, let's go back to 9.27. <clears throat> when you read those two verses right there about remnant, and in your mind, you think you know the definitions, you got to remember, we were speaking of ancient Greek here translated into English the best that is possible because folks there's not a English word for the Greek word Pentecost so the word Pentecost is an ancient Greek word but people think it's an English word it's not there's no English word for the word Pentecost so they call it what it was Pentecost <clears throat> so the remnant here in verse 927 if you'll get down there and proof text, I guess, if you want to, and get a concordance out, there are two different words. They have two different numbers for each word remnant. This remnant here means a few in 927. That is a remnant. It is a residue Isaiah also uses. But in 11.5, <clears throat> when Paul uses that remnant, he speaks there the remainder there is a remainder now that is the election of grace. Check it out for yourselves. <clears throat> now, let's get over here to uh, another verse. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, Micah, which I believe is speaking about the uh, remnant. I don't want to go all the way through it uh, because the entire chapter 5 is a good read. We're, so we're going to start. I will pick up in verses 3 and 4 here in a minute, but we're going to start in Micah 5, verse 8. <clears throat> and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people as a lion among the beasts. Was it the uh, Israel scattered among the Gentiles? That's to whom Paul went to. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treaded down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver, thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. We spoke last week about a cutting off. And it shall come to pass in that day. It's not here yet in Micah, but it's in that day. <clears throat> saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all the strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Did Paul meet a soothsayer in the beginning of Acts 13? Wasn't they doing these, this worship Paul, uh, Micah speaking about here in Ephesus? Thy graven images. Remember those little bitty statues, silver statues of Diana? Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the works of thine hands. <clears throat> and I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy the cities, and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Verses three and four. Therefore, there's what's that therefore there for? We need to read previous Micah, but we're not going to for time's sake tonight. <clears throat> Will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth have brought forth? Then the remnant of his brother shall return to the children of Israel. We're speaking of this remnant, this elect that Paul is going to in the book of Acts. Verse 4, and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide, for now shall he be great until the ends of the earth. Right here, folks, until the ends of the earth, 
who else said salvation until the ends of the earth? If you don't know, we've gone through that, the sure mercies of David, but we're going to point it out again. Let's go to Acts 13, 47. Remember, folks, until the ends of the earth. Remember that little phrase in Micah, Acts 13. <clears throat> we're just picking out words, folks, that uh, people want to overlook and change, and I don't allow it here. This is no snowflake zone. We don't deal with that. Acts 13, verse 47. Now look what this says. Remember, in Matthew 10, Paul, uh, Christ sends out the 12 apostles and commands them where not to go, except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. <clears throat> but Paul says, even though Luke wrote it right, we can't take that because Paul didn't write it. Paul says that right here in verse 47, for so the Lord commanded us, Paul and Barnabas commanded us the same as he commanded those 12 apostles in Matthew 10. And what did he command them? <clears throat> I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles that thou shouldest be salvation unto the ends of the earth. Why is Paul speaking about the ends of the earth? We've gone through that Romans 16, 20, where he says there and says, and God shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly doesn't the ends of the earth sound like the second coming the second coming being in first thessalonians when the trumpet sounds the coming of christ put these all things together folks we're not using logical conclusions we're using scripture with scripture that's what we use here we don't use proof texting we don't use cliches here if the word is only found one time in it, you cannot find it, then you cannot assume because the three first letters tells you exactly what that means. That makes you, when you take that and say that's Paul's Roman name, you can't find that in your Bible. <clears throat> now, being as Paul quotes this verse, we have to go back and look at it and see what Paul's quoting. Isaiah. Because, folks, this is Paul's Acts ministry right here. And we've gone over it, and we're going to say it again today. Isaiah 49, 6. <clears throat> Paul quotes this verse. This is what he was commanded by the Lord, him and Barnabas. Then we need to go back and see what the Lord himself commanded Paul and Barnabas, what their mission was. <clears throat> 49 6. And he said, Is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to rise up the tribes of Jacob, Jacob, Israel. Remember, he changed his name back in Genesis. To rise up the tribes of Jacob. Jacob's trouble is not, Jacob is not a good word in your Bible. <coughs> and to restore. The preserved, who are the preserved? The elect, the remnant, the preserved, you can find in Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, the saints that Paul writes to, not to the faithful in Christ, those saints, they have multiple names for these people. Your Bible does. Continue with 42, but restore Christ commanded Paul and Barnabas with that ministry to do this right here. It doesn't say he started anything new. It's in Isaiah. Paul says, Acts 26, 22. Duh. Speaking of those things, even now of the prophets and Moses. And I believe, if I remember right, Isaiah is one of those major prophets. <clears throat> we'll finish out the verse. Restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that they may, thou mayest be my salvation. Wait a minute. Until the end of the earth. There's an end of the earth coming, folks. And Paul is commanded to take that message until the end of the earth. So what does that tell you? The end of the earth, Paul knew was going to be in his lifetime. Whether you want to believe that or not, 
He knew the Lord's second coming was going to be in his lifetime because Christ commanded that out of Isaiah. It was prophesied. What's new there? <clears throat> now we're going to get into another word that uh, if you look in this dictionary right here, you can go online and find it. But I have two of these, and if I find more, I'll buy them because I really enjoy these. <clears throat> They've got a lot of words in there, folks. And when you look up this word right here, it's not what you think it is. Do that study. We're going to do a little on that study tonight, <clears throat> which is going to lead us into who could be a disciple and Paul's conversion in our next study within a month. <clears throat> because I'm going to continue probably most likely on this next week. If I don't change something, change my mind, I won't finish Romans 11 because we need to find out about that vine and that olive tree. And if not, we'll do that the following week, then start this next study. Let's look at the word suffer. You're going to find in 2 Timothy 1, Paul uses suffer. 2 Timothy 2, Paul uses suffer <clears throat> twice within a matter of verses. These words matter. But of the three times Paul uses the word suffer, each one has a different meaning. But if you only read suffer, I, I got blocked today on Facebook by a midnight dispensationist. And you think that's suffering for the Lord. You don't know what suffering is, folks. Somebody just rubbed your rhubarb wrong. You rubbed theirs wrong. That's all. It's not suffering. <clears throat> Let's go look at one. 2 Timothy 1.12. <clears throat> We're just trying to define words here in the context that they are using a concordance to help us because we didn't speak ancient Greek. I don't go to the Greek because I don't know the verb tenses because you can do one yourself. Paul uses the word reconciliation four times. But you only find it written three times. You'll have to search out what the other one is. And it's in Romans 4, but you want to know what the word is. It's called atonement. It's the same word as reconciliation. But the translators use atonement. We went through that back in the sure mercies of David. Same number. Look it up. It's a good study. So 2 Timothy 1.12. I got to get back there myself. I got a paper Bible. 2 Timothy 1.12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I believe, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. That day. You think that could be the end of the world? You have to sign for yourself, <clears throat> but um, suffer. Well, you don't see any suffering right here, really. And but that suffering in this verse is he feels. You look in the context of what he's telling. He has a passion. He feels it. He a passion. That's what suffer there is. <clears throat> now let's go to the next one. Second Timothy. Now we're going to read these verses uh, because I'm going to read six verses here. 2 Timothy 2, 7, Paul says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. There's a colon here. Wherein I suffer trouble. Now, folks, when you see the word suffer, and we're going to look at one that brings soon. There's a comma after suffer. There's another word after suffer here and called trouble. Then there's a comma. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure. I ask you to keep that third word there in the very beginning up here in mind, endure. <clears throat> now, before I continue on, we get down here. I'm not going to get into the reigning folks that happened a year and a half ago with the people off their kilters. The world in mid-acts or in the grace movement shattered 
when they're raining uh, was taught up in Connecticut. I'm not going to go into that. I don't listen to the guy. I have listened to that. I listened to it then, and I balked. I've since changed my mind. <clears throat> therefore, what's that therefore, therefore? Re I, I, what I just said, Paul says, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Those elects was those elect, those Jews that were not saved. He says it in the context here, they're not. And what does he say? That they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, that they may receive the salvation. I've been spending 30 years trying to get these people to believe. And he says in Romans 10, that some can be saved. He would be accursed if some would be a saved. Can you say that about that? Would you want to be accursed that a couple of people in your world could be a saved? Nobody's like that as that passion today. That is over the passion over in Timothy 1 that he speaks of. <clears throat> Levin is a faithful saying for if we be, folks, I have read this a hundred times. I taught it incorrectly. Because listen to what these next few verses say. And just think about what they say. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. There's a colon. Here's that word again, suffer. And we're going to look at both the trouble and the suffer right here in a second. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. <clears throat> now, you can go back to uh, uh, in gray circles and you can get a cliche or their understanding of that because, <clears throat> and I've taught it that way for years, but I was incorrect. If you read the verses for what it says, what's it say? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. We, if we deny him, <clears throat> he, <clears throat> he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth. Now, folks, you can look up the word abideth. I think Paul uses it twice. And one is uh, 1 Corinthians 13, and he uses it here. You find the word abideth in your scripture somewhere else. It's used a lot other places. And you, you have to connect it to abideth. <clears throat> if we believe not yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. I believe uh, in Romans 9, 10, 11, Paul says, and he says in Romans 3 also, God is true in every man a liar. Why is that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you people do. I made covenants with your fathers. I will fulfill those promises, even though I don't have any that want to do what I want them to do. So let's look at these two verses. Uh, nine, and we said suffer trouble. You'll look it up in the concordance, the context of it, and that is hardship. He did. He suffered trouble from his kinsmen. They stoned him. Five times they beat him with a cat of nine tails, save one. That's 39 lashes, five times. He suffered that trouble, that hardship. The same in Acts 9 where Christ says, tells Ananias, all the things that he's going to suffer for my name's sake. The next one, suffer. I told you in verse 10. To keep an eye on that one word, endure. Folks, <clears throat> when you look up the suffer in verse 12, it is the same word as endure in verse 10. Now, if that's the same word, let's look at it in that context. In verse 12, if we endure i said last week i think it's matthew 25 he that endures until is then i'm gonna see if i can find that verse real quick <clears throat> i don't want to misquote it yep 
24, 13. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Folks, this Acts ministry back here and Romans 11, a Gentile, they could be cut off. We went through that last week. Just put that word there. Go do the study yourself. If the endure and tend is the same as his word suffer in verse 13. And we'll take a couple more minutes. Uh, Harry's calling me off because we got to take, come, I had to tell my wife, I had to finish this board today. <clears throat> so the endure there, trouble, hardship, suffer is bear the trials, abide. It says, if you abide in Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, endure until the end. People are not going to like this one, folks. But frankly, I can water off a duck's back. I don't care. We're going to wrap this up. <clears throat> Let's go down to Jeremiah 23. I have to take a couple more minutes just to finish this. We were just like three minutes last week over, but uh, we're going to do the same today, just like three minutes. I get accused of talking fast. Everybody wants me to slow down, but I got a lot to say when I got things to say. So sometimes I don't have anything to say, but when I got something to say, I got something to say. <clears throat> 23, 1 through 6, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus the Lord of God of Israel against the pastors <clears throat> that feed my people, ye scattered my flock. Remember that word flock. And driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. I will gather the remnant, okay, remnant of the flock out of the countries. Do you think there's countries? Ephesus was in, Ephesus was not in Israel. <clears throat> Whether I have driven them and will bring them again into their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase, and I will set up shepherds. Over them, which shall feed, remember that, or feed and flock. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, they're coming, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, for this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord of righteousness. Now, folks, we just seen the word flock, the remnant, and he shall feed. Now, let's go to the, Paul is leaving Ephesus. He's writing 18, 19, 20, <clears throat> 21. He's leaving. He said, you probably will not see my face again. He's hugging them. They're hugging him. They're kissing. They're weeping. He's been there three years teaching these people, folks. Let's see what this verse says. Acts 20, 28. Remember the word flock and feed. <clears throat> Paul is speaking to the elders at Ephesus that he summoned. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, the elders of that church in Ephesus, the saints that in Ephesians 1, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. We're going to get into that more next week, folks. <clears throat> The feed and the flock mentioned there in Jeremiah, a remnant, which we spoke about. The elect that Jeremiah said is all through the book of Acts. No transition, a continuation of the law of Moses, the psalmist, and the prophets from Genesis through Malachi. And the mud clears when you write the Bible word of truth.